Hi, welcome to the session Azure SQL Readiness Assessment and Migration using Azure Data Studio. My name is Mohammed Kabiruddin. I'm a senior program manager in the Azure SQL team here at Microsoft. Today I'm going to talk to you about a new migration experience that's powered by the Azure Database Migration Service, which will help you seamlessly and easily migrate your databases from SQL Server on premises to Azure SQL using a simplified wizard experience. Let's dive in. So I want to set the context here by first talking about what's coming in this space for Azure SQL migrations. Uh, we had multiple tools, we still have multiple tools that can help you migrate databases from on-premises to Azure SQL. We have capabilities to assess databases, uh, to do discovery, to run experimentations and so on. But what's where we are investing our efforts is to make sure that we are able to capture all the feedback that you provided to us over the years. And with that, we are trying to come up with new experiences that will make migrations as simple as possible. So firstly, we want to bring simplified assessment and migration capabilities to the experiences that we build and launch. Uh, we want to be able to make sure that you are able to uh, uh, take your databases from on-premises to Azure SQL in the simplest possible way that's, uh, that you can. We also want to make sure that the experiences that we build from right from discovery to assessment to migration are cohesive and connected in nature, where you don't have to move from one interface to another to do the end-to-end -end migration journey, where you can simply use these experiences to deliver that connected experience for you. Then we look at providing migration experiences that will help you move your databases from on-premises to all flavors of Azure SQL, regardless of whether it's managed instance, SQL database or virtual machines. And lastly, all these experiences will be delivered with reliability and resiliency in mind. Uh, you will see that these experiences are scalable in nature, are resilient to failures, and will help you complete your migrations again in the simplest possible way that you could. With that, the two new experiences that we recently announced that are in public preview today are the discovery and assessment capabilities in Azure Migrate. Azure Migrate has been a signature product for all things discovery of your estates uh, to migrate to Azure. And we've in introduced new SQL Server assessment and discovery capabilities into that. What this basically allows you to do is if you have a large data estate with a large number of SQL servers, you can run Azure Migrate and go and discover all these servers, run an assessment, get an indicator of where your challenges are going to be in, in migrating those servers. We will provide you with readiness assessment and also give you SKU recommendations by collecting performance counters and metrics from your source servers to give you the right target SKU recommendations. And also on top of this, as someone who's looking at an enterprise data estate or an overall uh, server estate, you'd be interested in understanding what it takes in terms of cost to run these workloads on Azure. So we'll provide you with a monthly cost estimate if you were to run those servers on Azure as well. So that's Azure Migrate on one side. And on the other side, we have uh, Azure SQL migration extension in Azure Data Studio, which will help you migrate databases, whether these are single line of business applications or workloads for your reporting data marts, you can use this new extension to kick off an assessment and a migration of that database or that server and move all your databases to Azure SQL Managed Instance or SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines using this new experience. So we'll cover the second um, uh, experience, with, uh, which is the migration extension in Azure Data Studio in this session in a lot more detail. When we build these tools to deliver these experiences, we made sure that we had these principles in mind. Firstly, we wanted to ensure there's consistency and reusability of the same assessment engine in all the tools, regardless of whether you're using Azure Migrate or whether you're using Azure Data Studio, you will get the same assessment outputs and results. So there's gonna be an absolute consistency there. Secondly, the migration uh, service, which is provided by uh, the database migration service or popularly known as DMS, will be the same migration service that will be powering migrations in ADS and in future potentially in Azure Migrate. Uh, we are also looking at ways to simplify this and we want to make sure that there's lesser and lesser friction for you to get started with migrations. We understand that migrations can often be a complex set of activities uh, and we want to make sure that you have uh, enough 
tools that can deliver those, but also being able to simplify that whole experience and getting started with. And lastly, as I already mentioned, we wanted to bring this connected experience uh, right from the start and also provide intelligent insights along the way for you to navigate your migrations. So SKU recommendation in Azure Migrate is one such uh, component where we provide that intelligent insights based on what we understand of your workloads and give you a, an accurate SKU recommendation for you to migrate to. So today's session is going to be focusing on the new Azure SQL migration extension in Azure Data Studio that is currently in public preview. And we'll dive into that a little bit in detail here. So firstly, I want to cover the architecture for this experience. Now, although there is uh, the experience itself is delivered by Azure Data Studio as an extension, there's an underlying architecture and a service that powers all of it, which is DMS, which is why it's important to talk about this architecture. So what you'll see on this architectural diagram on the left-hand side is uh, your source SQL Server environment, and on the right-hand side, you have your target Azure environment where you'll be migrating to. Now on the source environment, you have obviously your source SQL Server, uh, anywhere from SQL Server 2008 and about that we support. You will also have backup stored in potentially uh, an SMB type file share and um, location. You can also have backups sitting in Azure storage uh, for those servers where you've already pushed the backups to Azure. And what we'll ask you to do as part of this whole experience is uh, if you use Azure Data Studio, you'll be downloading and installing Azure SQL migration extension, which is available in the Azure Data Studio marketplace. Once you do that, the components that will run the migrations for you are primarily DMS as a service on the right hand side in Azure. So let me start my laser pointer here. On the right hand side in your Azure subscription, we will allow you to uh, create a DMS service. And the creation of this DMS service will be done automatically through the wizard experience in the Azure SQL migration extension when you use the wizard inside data, Azure Data Studio. And this will be at no cost to you. So DMS service will be this orchestrator that will be running in your subscription. You don't need to manage it. It's fully managed by Microsoft. We'll take care of all the orchestration activities. We'll take care of any management uh, for that service. And once you create the DMS service uh, through the extension, we will ask you to download and install self-hosted integration runtime. So for those who are familiar with Azure Data Factory, self-hosted integration runtime is a very popular runtime and uh, component to install in your on-premises environment to provide access to files, databases, and so on. Uh, that is exactly what we are allowing you to do here to allow you to install this uh, integration runtime in your environment so that it can go fetch the backup files in your SQL Server and move it to Azure Storage from where we can restore it to the target. So basically, DMS acts as the end-to-end -end orchestrator here allowing SHIR or the self-hosted integration runtime to go pick up the backups, it will instruct it to go move those to Azure Storage and DMS will also make sure that the, the backups once they're moved to the Azure Storage account will be restored to the target environment. Again, DMS as a service is resilient and reliable in nature, so we assure you that the migrations will be resilient and scalable uh, should you need to increase the number of self-hosted integration runtimes. So again, there are best practices around how you can use the integration runtime, whether you want to scale it up to provide more compute or whether you want to scale it out to uh, distribute the workload across uh, the integration runtimes. Those capabilities are available and uh, some of those best practices will be shared in the documentation. Now, one thing to note here is that uh, DMS in this case associates itself automatically with self-hosted integration runtime when you do this through the migration extension. So you don't have to worry about install, installing the runtime, associating with DMS, all that is automatically taken care of. And you'll see that in the demo that I show you. Now, um, I just wanted to dive a little bit more into why we chose self-hosted integration runtime uh, as the capability to do the migration or the uploads to Azure primarily because it's been a very popular and robust tool uh, for, for those customers who have been using Azure Data Factory will appreciate this, where 
the SHIR provides compute in a hybrid environment. You can either install it on an on-premise uh, environment or you can install it in Azure as well. It's easy to install. Uh, it has very um, limited requirements in terms of firewalls. All it needs is an outbound 443 port to be open for it to communicate with Azure. Uh, it works with or without express route. It has a lot of rich monitoring built in that we can leverage for migrations. And it provides high availability both uh, for scale out to up to four nodes. It also allows you to auto update it where if there was an update to the IR, you can choose to auto update uh, function to automatically update the SHIR uh, if it's running on one of your servers. Now the credentials that get stored in SHIR for communication to the source are encrypted by uh, the data protection API. Uh, you can also encrypt it using Azure Key Vault. It is secure, compliant, and certified by many enterprises already who are using Azure Data Factory. So it has a lot of capabilities that are being leveraged in this new experience to do your database migrations. So with that, I wanna dive into the demo. Uh, for migrating a database from on-premise SQL Server to Azure SQL Managed Instance. And I'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how you can do that using the new extension in Azure Data Studio. In this demo, I'll walk you through migrating a SQL Server database from on-premises to Azure SQL Managed Instance using the new Azure SQL Migration extension here in Azure Data Studio. This extension is powered by the Azure Database Migration Service to help you migrate your databases from on-premises SQL Server to SQL MI or to SQL on virtual machines. With that, let's get started. The first thing we'll ask you to do is to go into the extensions marketplace in Azure Data Studio and install the new Azure SQL migration extension. This extension is currently in public preview and we currently support migrations to Azure SQL Managed Instance or SQL Server on Azure VMs. So once you install the extension using the Marketplace Gallery, you'll come back to your server connections in Azure Data Studio where you connected to a SQL database. So here I've connected to my AdventureWorks database in my on-premises machine. Let me double click that. You can also get here by clicking on Manage and you'll see a landing page for the server connection. Because you've installed the extension already, you will see the extension popping up here. If you click on it, we'll take you to the landing page for the SQL migration extension. When you come in here, basically you have the button to get started with your migration. You can look at statuses for your existing migrations that are, that are either ongoing or previous migrations that you've completed. We give you links to some helpful articles. And if you face any issues, you can raise a support request by clicking on this button here. If you'd like to give us feedback on any feature enhancements, make sure you log feedback by clicking on this button so to get started, the first thing you do is click on Migrate to Azure SQL. Now this is a step-by-step -step wizard that will walk you through migrating a database. The first thing in this wizard is asking you to select an Azure account. Most often, if you're a user of Azure Data Studio, you would have associated an Azure account already into Azure Data Studio. We'll pick that up from there. If you haven't done so, you can click on this button and link a new Azure account. Once you've selected your Azure account, click on next and then it'll ask you to select the databases that you want to assess for migrations in my case i have two databases in my on-premise machine i'm going to select both of them and click next once you've selected the databases for assessments and clicked on next we'll do an assessment of your databases and provide you with options for your azure sql target currently we support sql managed instance and sql server on azure virtual machines as targets Using this extension, we have plans to include Azure SQL database uh, as a target into this extension in future. For now, you can have a look at what your assessment results are for these two options. I selected two databases. It looks like one database out of those two is ready for SQL managed instance. So I'm gonna choose that and have a look at which one that is. So once you come into the assessment results page, you can see both your databases listed that you chose for assessment and it highlights the one that has issues and it disables selection of the database. We don't want you to migrate databases that has potential issues that can cause failures during your migration or can lead to significant impact of your database. So if you look at the one that has issues, 
It basically says that the database has multiple log files, which is not a supported feature in Azure SQL Managed Instance. And for that reason, we don't allow you to select this database for migration. But the other database, which is AdventureWorks, has no issues and it's ready for migrating to SQL MI. So I'm going to choose that and click OK. After you've selected your databases to be migrated to SQL MI, we will ask you to provide the details for your Azure SQL Managed Instance using a subscription. Because we've collected your Azure account, we are able to list all the subscriptions you have access to. So we'll ask you to choose your managed instance from the subscription, select the resource group, and select your managed instance. Then click on Next. You will then be asked to choose from one of the following migration modes, either online or offline. Online migration is the most preferred option for most customers where your application downtime is limited to the time it takes to cut over from the source to the target. This downtime is fairly limited in the sense that the downtime is required to migrate the last stale log back up and restore it on the target. With an offline migration, your application downtime starts from the time you start migrating and lasts until the time you finish your migration. This is suitable for applications that are related to dev test environments or that are not sensitive to business downtimes. So I'm going to choose online migration here and click on next. You can choose between having your source database backups either in your on-premises network share or those database backups that you might already have on an Azure storage container. If you choose Azure storage block container, one step of the process is reduced because we can simply go pick up the backups from your Azure storage and restore them on the target. If you have your backups on a network share, this wizard will guide you through the process of migrating your databases from your on-premises network share as well. So I'm going to choose network share here. I'm going to provide my credentials for my source SQL server. This is my backup location where I have my source SQL server backups. And I'm going to provide my credentials to access the network share. So I'm migrating the database called AdventureWorks. I can change the name on the target if I need to. I'm going to leave it as is. And I'm going to provide my storage account because I'm providing the backups in the network share. As part of this migration process, those backups will be migrated to an Azure storage account and then restored from there into the target managed instance. So I need a storage account where I can move these backups to. So I'm going to provide that and click on Next. In this step, we will help you create a database migration service, install the self-hosted integration runtime, and then start your migration process. So if you have already created a database migration service using this new extension experience, you can choose that from your existing subscription and resource group. If you don't have it already, I would create a new one. I'll choose my resource group and then create a new service. So I'll give it a name, DMS Demo 2021. Once I hit on create, it'll go and create a DMS service in my Azure subscription that I selected. And it'll display the installation instructions to download and install the integration runtime. So I'm going to click on download and install, open the browser, to download the integration runtime. Now, once you've installed the integration runtime, you'll be asked to enter the authentication key. The authentication key is provided in Azure Data Studio when you created the DMS service. I'm gonna copy that key, enter it over here. You'll see that green check and then you click on register. Once you click on register, this is gonna go register the integration runtime with this current node where I've installed it. And once you click on finish, it'll go register this with the DMS service that we just created. As you can see, the registration is complete uh, and your integration runtime is set up for migrating a database. Once you come back to your Azure Data Studio, you can click on Test Connection over here and this should tell you if your database migration service that you just created, which is DMS 2021, is connected to the self-hosted integration runtime that you just installed. 
everything looks good I'm gonna click on done and make sure I see a green check in the status here it looks good I'm gonna click on next and here I can see a summary of my source database my target SQL managed instance my backup locations and the Azure storage account once you're happy with the summary click on done and this should start the migration process you will see a pop-up appearing here that tells you that you're migrating your AdventureWorks database to SQL MI and it's called AdventureWorks on the target and once you refresh this dashboard you should now see one database migration in progress when you click on that you will see that migration that you just started is currently in progress you can further click on this to see more details as you can see it has a lot of details around your source database your target SQL MI your backup location and you can also see the status of each of your backups that are being restored on the target so right now it's uploading and arriving into your storage accounts we also show you the first and the last lessons on each of these backups and provide you with some basic stats around throughput uh, the upload size and the backup start time if you'd like to refresh the status you could click on refresh status now that you can see both database backups my full backup and my transaction log backup have been fully restored to azure sql managed instance and it's ready for completing the cutover process if i quickly switch back to uh, my sql managed instance uh, connected using my sql server management studio here you can see that this database adventure works is in restoring mode in my managed instance it's not ready for transactions just yet until you complete the cutover process so i go back to my data studio now that I'm ready to complete the cutover process, I click on complete cutover here. It launches a dialog box that says I need to stop all incoming transactions to my source database, take a final tail log backup uh, before completing the cutover and verify that all the backups have been restored. We also do a validation check to see if all the log backups have been restored. In my case, everything has been restored. So the backups pending are zero and I'm confirming that there are no additional log backups to provide. Once I'm satisfied with these, I click on complete cutover, the cutover process begins. You get a pop-up stating that the cutover process has been started and the status changes from in progress to completing. Once I go, go back to my dashboard, I should see that the database is in completing cutover status. And if I quickly switch back to my MI, you should now notice that the database is fully restored. So here you can see that the migration is completed. If I click on that migration, status and look at the database here you'll see that the migration is succeeded the backups are restored and uh, your database is ready for transactions in the demo you just saw how you could migrate your sql server database to azure sql managed instance using the new migration extension if you like this experience and if you'd like to get started please go to ak.ms slash azure sql migration extension where you'll see documentation on how to get started and use this experience. Besides that, we've also published a lot of guidance around database migrations in general for all flavors of Azure SQL, but also for open source databases, which you can use uh, and leverage for your projects. Go to aka.ms slash data migration to learn more around the migration guides. Now, before we go, I'd like to thank uh, sponsors in the community for supporting this event. Uh, special thanks to Microsoft and the Data Platform Geeks and the SQL Server Geeks community uh, who've made this event possible and to make this a success. Mm -hmm.